<laughs> yeah, I actually started an hour early since I don't know how long the last few chapters are gonna are gonna be, but yeah, let's finish this off and then we can start with the next one and wait till next year for the final volume of the main stories. And yes, I say main stories because it's like all those other ones that came out later. Let's get started. At first, I thought it was a dream. I was staring at the strange sheet, not really understanding what it was. That was all. I didn't go after it, nor did I ridicule it. The fact was that the boring view was the ceiling of my own room, but I didn't realize that for a fairly long time. Yes, I thought I had been dreaming, but I actually have been staring at the ceiling the whole time. Lethargy induced by the voice of the cicadas. Even after I realized I was awake, I couldn't draw forth the energy to sit up. Everything I could see, everything I could hear, everything was like a television broadcast that had already ended. It was hot. So hot I could choke on the heat. My back was moist, moist with night sweat, and it felt gross. Unable to endure it any longer, I tossed in my futon, and finally blood started coursing through my brain. I lazily recalled the long day I had yesterday. The reality as I laid listening to the voices of the cicadas, and yesterday so different from it. In order to kill Satoko's uncle, I had rehearsed, formulated a plan, and dug a hole. It was very hot, and I was tired, wasn't I? <coughs> and when evening came, I went to school and calm and called him out on the phone. I panicked for him for a moment when he asked where the police station was, but it worked out. And then I waited for him and swooped down. I couldn't remember any more of what sort of emotions I'd let control my body. In any case, it didn't go smoothly, but I did it. It was very hard to dig the hole for the body. I feel of the rain pelting down on me. I don't think I'll ever forget it. The rain, the mud, the sprays of blood, the sensation of floundering in a swamp. When I met Takano-san on the way home, that wasn't good, no matter how I interpreted it. It was the most unfortunate and uncalculated thing that had happened that night. Everything would have been perfect, if only I hadn't encountered her. Ha. <laughs> I was just riding my bike with my shovel in one hand through the downpour, utterly soaked. There was no way someone could surmise I was a murderer, burying a body just from that information. Now that I was thinking calmly, napping under the morning sun, that's what I thought. Still, the more I think about Takano-san's eyes, it seemed like she understood. Takano-san, she knew that I killed someone, buried them, and that I'd let them, and that I'd been on the way home exhausted. Takano-san wouldn't gain anything from selling me out to the police, but that didn't mean I could feel at ease. I should have killed her.
I had crossed I I had crossed such a bridge to get my tranquil life back and I'd finally achieved it as a result but now for the rest of my life for all the tranquil days starting today I'd have to live in fear of when they could suddenly end I may have twisted my ankle dull from total exhaustion the fact that I couldn't make the snap judgment when I needed to I regretted more it more and more as time went on. You didn't have a choice, choice, KG Maibara. You didn't have a choice at the time. You were tired. You were a mess. Even if you had made the, the decision, you might not have been able to kill her. She might have just beaten you instead. In that sense, parting ways un uneventfully could have been the safer option. No matter how sharp Takano-san's intuition was, she had no proof. Her suspecting me didn't amount to evidence by itself. Logically, I know that, but that doesn't mean I have nothing to worry about, does it? Just to worry about it... <laughs> okay, just to worry about it when the time comes. Now isn't the time to be worrying. It's the time to be smiling, right? You accomplished so much just to gain a new life starting today, didn't you? Then you should be happy at this new morning. If I remember... If remembering the past is too hard for you, then consider everything up to yesterday as having never... As having never happened. You said so yourself. You'd bury it all like it never happened. Well, your wish came true. Everything before yesterday never happened. So be happy, Keiji Maibara. Yay. I stuck up my hands lazily. It felt a little silly for me to be the one doing it. I heaved a sigh from deep in my belly. That sigh got my lungs moving. It felt like I hadn't been breathing until just now. It wasn't enough to uh, admonish myself over. All the dice that could have been thrown already had been. And the numbers that turned up weren't bad at all. If I lost with those numbers, then I just have to give up, I guess. I grabbed my chest of my the chest of my pajamas and flapped it back and forth. Cool air flowed all over my sweating body. Okay. Nothing before yesterday happened. Nothing. Nothing at all. I'd forget it all. Yesterday was all a dream. What time was it? About midday? Getting myself up and going to school this late s seemed kind of absurd, but I needed to go. I felt like going to school would be the first step into my peaceful new life. I didn't care how late it was, I would go. I'd go to school right now and get back to life. I had retaken as soon as I could. My bo lazy body immediately became lighter at that at the thought. I rolled up out of the futon, bounced onto my knees, and leaped upright. Nice, stuck the landing. I stuck out my chest with pride at my gymnast-like pose, then took a deep breath of fresh air. The brisk morning air had, got, had been gone for a while, replaced by the crisp air of summer. Downstairs, I got a stern talking by my mother where were you last night when did you get back you needed to you need to tell me when you won't be home for dinner things like that but considering the importance of what I had accomplished yesterday a little scolding was no problem in fact it even felt like the sort of thing that would happen in a in such a peaceful life I listened with an irresponsible smile and stepped out into the Sun with high overhead 
It was around the time lunch break would be ending. Everyone would probably... Everyone would probably be worrying about me. I didn't go to the festival, and now I wasn't at school. Well, maybe they weren't too worried about it. Since, they would have gotten a small piece of news, but a happy one from Satoko today. Yes, a small piece of news that her uncle hadn't come home last night. Satoko would probably live her days in nervous tension for a while, thinking he, mu he might still come home. But eventually, those days would end. And finally, Satoko too would realize her uncle was never coming back. And then Rika-chan would quietly invite her. She would say, you can leave with, live with me again, and everything would be back to normal. Our lives would go back to how they were before that man appeared. Satoko would start worrying that extraordinary smile, complete with those protruding canines, and fool everyone with those traps she was so proud of. I'd probably be her first target out of everyone, but I wouldn't be mad. In fact, I might actually shed a tears of joy at the return of something so small. Satoko, she'd gradually grow back into that meddlesome personality of hers. I mean, my lack of useful life skills was already ex already completely exposed. I wonder if I'd ever be a match for Satoko. But that would be such a pleasant thing to see too. And with such a warm fuzzy and with such warm fuzzy prediction, I didn't feel bad for going to school so late. In fact, I wanted to run there to get there as soon as I could. Instead, I decided to savor the peacefulness and just of just going to school like normal without running. The world I'd attained for myself, that gave me joy by walking like this. Yes, the world beginning on this very day was something I had won. Without the monumental feat yesterday, I would never have been able to come to school so cheerfully today. The school gate came into sight. Just then, I heard the principal ringing the bell to mark the end of lunch break. It was a clear, refreshing sound. I stopped, despite myself, and let myself take it in. Tap. I'd stopped suddenly. So there was an extra footstep. With a noise, the blessedness I was feeling throughout my whole body withdrew into any pore it could find. And as if to replace it, I felt like hundreds of hairy caterpillars were climbing up my feet. I turned back, but of course, nobody was there. A single footstep could have easily been my imagination, but the footstep felt so om ominous. The extra footstep I heard after seeing Takano-san off last night. Of everything that ha happened on the insane night, I didn't mind something like that happening once. It, it had been quite a night after all. In fact, having just one hallucination was pretty fortunate, but those footsteps should have ended with yesterday. So, if I heard him again today, there was really only one thing it could have meant. Last night still wasn't over. It was still going, still. That insane night, forever. The step I heard, just one extra footstep, was quietly, quietly ridiculing the nonsensical notion that the world starting today was completely different from the one that ended yesterday. My classmates playing in the schoolyards all vanished like the tide going out. When I approached the school, it felt like a, that warm fuzzy scene has, had ended, and it didn't feel it didn't feel good. At the entrance, I took took a quick look in everyone's shoe boxes. Satoko Hojo, she was here. Mion was here too, and Rena, of course. Even Rika-chan was here. 
told me that Kun and Okamoto Kun were here. In fact, I didn't see any missing classmates. If there were shoes miss missing, they would have to be my own. I took my shoes off and stuck them in, then took out took out some slippers. There wasn't a single pair left in the shoe box and boxes anymore. With all that, they returned to their rifled state. So as I stepped up onto the wooden floor, I noticed there were just one pair of slippers left. Huh? Whose? Satoshi Hojo. Satoshi, who had never been in the school since disappearing last year. Until now, we had committed the same exact act of violence, but I guess in the very end, it went differently. You couldn't make it to school, but here I am. I didn't repeat the same mistakes you made. I wasn't about to let myself feel superior about that. In fact, I felt an odd sense of familiar familiarity with the him. A misfortunate bond with someone I'd never met due to the following same fate. I headed down the hallway towards the usual classroom. It felt like it had been a whole year since coming here. Oh god, that noise always creeps me out. Hey, did you forget Keiji Maibara? Satoshi Hojo didn't really disappear on the night of the Watanagashi Festival, didn't he? Did he? And Satoshi Hojo disappeared a few days later on Satoko's birthday, if I was right. I didn't know what day it was. But I couldn't say for sure I had avoid, avoided Satoshi's failure until I remained here the past that day. I was still living in the night of insanity. The teacher still hadn't come to the classroom. The other door clattered open, the one the teacher wouldn't use, so everyone turned up once to see who had arrived. Everyone looked pretty vacant. Hmm. Suppose I'll greet them. Good morning, ladies and gentle gentlemen. I do thank you for coming all the way out here today. <laughs> Silence. When I started to think I'd fallen flat, someone finally started laughing at me. <laughs> Good morning, Kei-chan. You're pretty energetic today. Yeah, energetic. Maybe you've gotten out of the festive mood yet. You haven't gotten out of the festive mood yet. How? Hearing Mion and Rena's cheerful voice made me realize how dumb those dark feelings I'd been having at the entrance really were. Hey now, festive mood? I wasn't at the festival at all, remember? Before I could say that, Rika-chan smiled at me. Keiji, did you make sure to watch my dance? Yep, he saw it just fine. Didn't you see how big an applause he gave you? And he ignored it when that blockhead Shion came up and made a pa pass at him. <laughs> Take that, Shion. Wow, that felt good. Mion started laughing at the memory as, he, as she slapped me a few times on the back. So, how did that target practice contest turn out in the end? Tomida-kun was facing me and talking. There was nobody behind me. That meant he was talking to me? Tomi Tomitake turned up dead last. Everyone had a good time with his punishment game. <laughs> Weren't you supposed to be the one in last place, Rika-chan? It was such a turnaround when you pulled off the gun, getting the chewing gum. I should have expected that from a member of my club. It was fantastic. 
Brian at a time like that is the only feat only fur day would be allowed to do, said Okamoto-kun, breathing heavily from his nose. I have the noise though, in my direction. Everyone laughed. If anyone but Rika-chan had done it, it would have been against the rules. Rika-chan gave one of her Nipa's smiles as she listened to it. In my direction, Rena too turned to me, no, turned towards me, and then with somewhat embarrassed smile, she whispered to me so I could only hear. But really, thanks, Kijiku. For what? A giant stuffed animal. I was really happy. It's nice and safe right but at my bedside. And I made sure to give it a good night kiss before bed too. Hello? The class laughed at that, at cheering and jeering. This whole time, the conversation had been a little bit off. I wasn't quite getting it. What's this about a stuffed animal? What's this? Come on, we all been, we all worked really hard at the festival yesterday to get it down. Remember, the gigantic stuffed animal. The gigantic stuffed animal. Rena seemed taken aback, but when she answered, she did with a smile. Oh my god, I almost thought she was gonna go into creepy mode. We were having a hard time locking it over, so we tried aiming at the forehead and rapid fire and shooting stuff. And then Keiji-kun, you got a whole bunch of guns ready beforehand and shot them all. It was so cool! How? Wait, who was this? <laughs> that music, though. All the people in the neighborhood associ association, including the chairman, were praising you so much at the party afterwards. One of them said he'd He'd fallen in love with your way of words, Tokuzo Kimiyoshi, the chairman of the children's committee, I think? He said he wanted you to entrust you- he said he wanted you to entrust you with a few of the stalls at the next festival. Tokuzo is the chair of the refreshment booths. He's on the festival executive committee. My but san is making a making things sound good, isn't he? Yep, whenever he talks about something, it seems a lot better than it actually is. <laughs> you can't say that. <laughs> Kiji kun, you'd be a great salesman. If you did a bargain sale on bananas or something, I bet it would be so great. What have you been talking about? I mean I didn't go to the festival in the first place. I'd swallow those words. I didn't know exactly why, but in Hinamizawa, this is what ha had happened. Yesterday, during the Watanagashi festival, Keiji Maibara had appeared. He had romped about uh, with all the usual members of his club, he made a big scene at a few of the stalls, snatched a few six sticks of takoyaki and okonomi This is gonna take a bit. Okonomiyaki taki in his glee, rating each of them as delicious or terrible to get everyone excited. And they seen a gigantic stuffed animal at the target practice game, and everyone went after it. And then I got a whole bunch of cork guns, firing them in rapid session, throwing each one away after using it. And admirably, I shut down, shut down the biggest stuffed animal there. 
And then I gave the stuffed animal the proof of my victory to Rena as a gift. Then our fun came to a close as we got, had had to go see Rika-chan's offertory dance. There was a ton of people squeezed in there and we all got separated but we managed to get into a good position to cheer Rika-chan from. Then in the middle, when Shion came up and asked me to go hang out with her instead of watching the dedication dance, I refused and stayed put, watching the dance until the very end. But who? Who was that? Well, everyone's been saying it, haven't they? They? Keiji Maibara? I had an urge to yell in anger at my classmates for having so much fun Talking about the festival yesterday with KG Maibara. What are you guys even talking about? Far stronger than that feeling, though, was the sheer uncanny nature of this reality I couldn't understand. A KG Maibara who wasn't me was in Hinamizawa yesterday. As I threw away my humanity, turned into a demon and was busy beating Satoko's uncle to death. I was having a great time at the festival last night. What? I had to suffer through so much, desperately holding back tears, getting so worn down in the downpour, digging holes, chasing, beating, killing, dragging and burying. Who was this Keiji Maibara who had ignored me and spent and spend such a fun, carefree time at the festival. Who stood in for me as I put my life on the line, working so hard to achieve this treasure-like everyday life? If there was another KG Maibara besides me, then what was I on the night of Watanagashi? Where one died and one disappeared in accordance with Oyoshiro Sama's curse, there was only a demon who had killed someone. Dumbfounded, as I succumbed to the horrifying possibility, I looked around my classmates to make sure there was nobody extra I didn't recognize among them. To make sure I wasn't among them, it was a horrifying thought that the real Keiji Maibara hadn't overslept and had come to school on time. And that I, who was no longer Keiji Maibara, had waltz, just waltz in here, here. But no matter how much I checked, the only people here were the ones I knew. And the man I met every time, looked in the bathroom mirror, was not here. Okay, everyone. Time to start afternoon classes. Please take your seats. President, please leave the class. The teacher entered and everyone hurried back to their seats. Upon finding me, who was so stupidly late, she gave me a stern talking to, but I wasn't listening to it. Wasn't our old life supposed to start today? Something wasn't right. It was just strange. I was supposed to go back to my old fun life after yesterday. I had set foot in an uncomparably mysterious world that was completely different from both my old life and recent one. Yes, this one, this was without a doubt a different world than the one I'd been living until now. There was no possible way such an absurd thing could be possible. Unless it was true, I couldn't explain anything that just happened. In this classroom, I was surrounded by so many faces I knew, and yet feel, uh, felt isolated. The cicadas sounded no different than they had before now, but they seemed somehow false. The air was parched and dry too, making me think was the air in Hinamizawa always this uncomfortable?
Hey, Rena. What is it? We're in class. About the festival yesterday. About when you say... When would you say I got there? Huh? To be honest, I was pretty excited afterwards and I gobbled down some cans of beer. I mean, it's kind of embarrassing, but I don't quite remember some things. Random babbling, it wasn't a bad excuse. Hey, G kun you said you couldn't come at first, di didn't you? You called Michan's house about it, right? That match, I called Mion and told her to take Satoko in my place, since I wouldn't be able to meet up with them due to the things I had to do. We all decided we were setting up for the festival that we had invited Satoko-chan. We wanted to help... We wanted to bring her out someplace where she couldn't see her uncle for a little while. That was the same too. Mion said that when I called her, that everyone had already decided to invite her. And then we all went... Went, me, Mi-chan, and Rika-chan to Satoko's house and brought her out. Satoko-chan's uncle seems like a really mean person. That part didn't matter. All I was trying to ask was, I, well, when did I meet up with you? How could I, how could you forget that, Keiji-kun? I think you shouldn't be drinking until you're an adult. Whatever, when did I meet up with you? Uh, um, well? At my sudden, threatening demand, Rena was lost for words. Oops, I shouldn't have, have rushed that. I told her I was sorry. It was at the Shrine Grounds. It was unexpected. You were talking to Rika-chan, weren't you? Yep. You were having a fun talk with Rika-chan in her Shrine Maiden outfit. And then Rena came up and said, Hello? I'm taking you home. I was talking to Rika-chan. And I asked, Kei-chan, didn't you have something to do, do today? Then you pounded your chest and said it yourself. That letting loose at a festival was more important than some silly errand. I didn't say that. I never said anything like that. I never even went to the shrine grounds yesterday to begin with. I had never had the time to stop by a place like that. I went to dig the hole as soon as I woke up. I had a pretty hard time doing it. After that, I snuck into the school and made a call. I called them out and lay in wait, and then it started raining pretty hard. With that kind of downpour, the festival should have come, come to a halt. In other words, it ended then. From the time the festival started to when it ended, it would have been impossible for me to have swung by the shrine grounds. I was already there when Mion and others had dragged Satsuko out and brought her to the shrine, and I was talking to Rika-chan. Then, where would Rika-chan say we met? The teacher went out to wash her hands, so I went over to Rika-chan's desk and asked her, her directly. With you? Yeah. Were we talking to each other before Mion and the others got here? When did we see each other? When and where? I don't know what you're trying to ask. I, uh, drank so much beer I lost some of my memory. I don't remember a thing. <laughs> Looked like Rika-chan brought into my babbling. We saw each other when the mayor and the others came out, out of the assembly hall. You were in front of the ritual implement storehouse. Huh? What? The Ritual Implement Storehouse. I'd never heard a building called that before. Or maybe I have, but at the very least, I wouldn't want to know where on the Shrine Ground it was. The mayor got real angry at you since you... She didn't go near holy places without authority, remember? Keiji, did you forget that too? I was too scared to ask anymore. The more I ask... The more it became clear without any doubt that Keiji Maibara was present, present at the Furu Day Shrine 
during the Watanagashi festival. The clearer that became, the more doubts. No. I had... Who on earth was I yesterday? Whoever that was, he had a good time in my place and managed to go out the entire day without letting them notice I weren't... I wasn't there. Oh, right. When did that person leave everyone? This morning, my mother got mad at me for staying out so late last night, which meant, at the very least, that KG might, but I... Didn't, hadn't come home when my mother was still awake. The festival would have been closed because of the downpour. If I recall right, when I went back to the house, house's storage room, to get another other shovel, I think the clock said 7. Since it was already raining hard, <clears throat> the festival would have had to close down before 7. If I'd returned that early, I would have definitely run into my parents. Or at the very least, they wouldn't have asked me when I got back last night. And thanks for the Corgi, Etla. So the KG Maibara from yesterday, that meant he never went home. That meant the downpour happened, the festival broke, was broken up, everyone left. But he didn't go back to the house. Um, that means... When I arrived at the natural conclusion, a wicked chill suddenly froze my spine and climbed up my brain. That meant Keiji Maibara was the same as Satoshi. One day he never went home. On the night of Watanagashi, he never went home. The downpour interrupted the festival and on the way home, he suddenly disappeared. And I, who was dealing with the corpse, went home without a problem. I was so tired I wasn't even hungry, so I went up to my room without a sound and crawled in into my futon. Who was I? That much was obvious. KG Maibara? KG Maibara was me. <clears throat> there may have been another one, but that doesn't negate the fact that I was KG Maibara. Then, that the other KG Maibara was... What? And the voices of the cicadas steadily filling the classroom was beginning to bother me. Suddenly, I laid eyes on Satoko. This is what I think seeing those eyes. Satoko's expression was dark as always. She seemed completely exhausted at a life of agony she couldn't even imagine an ending to. What had last night been for like for Satoko? Did she have fun with everyone and felt a little happier if even for a moment? And when she went home, the end of her dream she probably gone up to sleep, afraid of when her uncle would return. And then this morning, her uncle hadn't come home, and then she went to school. Right now, she must have been still trapped by the rotten idea from which she couldn't be saved, that her uncle would need her 
when she gets she got back. But you can rest easy, Satoko. Your uncle won't be ever be coming back. I couldn't tell her it was because I'd killed him. When Satoko realized on her own that her uncle would never return, then that would truly be the end of the long, the long insane night. <coughs> Sorry about that. That's right. I didn't do anything wrong. I did the best possible. Did the best possible thing I could have. As Satoko's Nini, not an atom in my body regretted it. And look, calm down and think, Eiji Maibara. From a certain point point of view, isn't it convenient there was another Eiji Maibara? I buried the corpse perfectly. A beginning wouldn't happen, but if worse comes to worse and it got out, an investigation got to me. I now had a strong alibi, able to profess the fact that I'd been at Watanagashi at the Watanagashi festival. But accepting something so creepy and using it as an alibi. Still, if I prove I hadn't gone to the festival yesterday, and it would look no good in the whole lot of harm, it would do no good in the whole lot of harm. That was that was what left the really actually bad aftertaste. You'll never forget it, KG Maibara. Everything that happened before yesterday, just so forget about the KG Maibara who was there yesterday too. Instead, let's watch gently over Satoko for the day her smile returns and the day that would mark the end of that insane all too long night. That's all for today, class. Please go straight back to your homes, everyone. President, if you would, everybody, please stand up at attention. Bow. Goodbye. I had thought about many things and saw my thoughts dispersed by many other things. I didn't know whether or not that time had been spent worrying. And how are you doing tonight, by the way, Etla? Had been spent worrying or daydreaming, but either way, it came to an end along with the class. Cheerfully, our classmates got their things and ran for the hallway. Mio and Rena and Satoko and Rika-chan we're packing up as well. What about Satoko? But this whole day, she seems deflated. Well, her uncle may not have returned last night, but she wouldn't have known he'd never return. How much I wanted to express that fact to, to her. Satoko packed up her pencil box and math her book messily. And after a dark glance at the clock, heaved a sigh, then went to leave the classroom. Then somebody, then suddenly somebody placed her, placed a hand on her shoulder and stopped her. What is it? It watered down the plants like I was supposed to and got all the printouts done. Her words, possessed by the persecution com complex, hurt. I spoke loudly so everyone could hear. Hey everyone, why don't we, why don't... Why don't we have club today? It's been a while. Satoko always had to tend to her uncle, so club has been on a hiatus. In our minds, our club was a proof of a calm, peaceful life. By enjoying being together, I wanted... Okay, can you guys hear me? Oh, oh okay, mic is working. I wanted to make Satoko realize her days of darkness were over. I'm... okay. I'll do it. Beep! Well, I mean... I don't mind. If it's today, if it's okay with Satoko. Under a condition. That was important. Important. With everything up to her, Satoko gave a worried look. Come on, Satoko. It's been a long time. Let's go crazy. Well, I'm happy you feel that way, but... My uncle... 
might already be home. My uncle might already be home. <laughs> Thus her darkened eyes, her mouth unmoving. You've been choking on life every day for a while. You must be about to suffocate. It's not good for your mind or body. Once in a while, you gotta have some fun. Please, leave it alone. It's not like I don't want to do the club again. With one word, but... She looked that down. Satoko, you know as well as anyone that's... That's more fun being with everyone, right? We're friends. That means we can spend time with each other. I mean, you had a great time at the festival yesterday with everyone, didn't you? Rena nearly said something, but she said was, but she was too late. Keiji-san, what are you saying? My arm on her shoulder seemed to weigh her down, and she threw it off. When exactly was I playing and having fun at the festival? The only one having fun was you, Keiji-san. Huh? I looked over to Mion for help, but now everyone was looking down. My instincts told me that Satoko hadn't gone to the festival, but Rena said it herself that she went with Mion to Satoko's house to invite her. Satoko-chan left on the way there. She didn't go to the shrine. What? Why? I realized the absurdity of what I just said with Satoko in front of me. She said her uncle was waiting at home, and she couldn't have fun by herself when we were in front of the shrine. We, we tried to stop her too. We told her her uncle said it was okay and that he wouldn't get mad if she had a good time. At some point, tears began welling up in Satoko's eyes, Satoko was so afraid of her uncle that she couldn't even allow herself time with her friends and went home. No, she was even afraid of letting herself have a good time with her friends. Heiji-san, you must have it nice. Heiji-san, you must have it nice having a blast at the festival all night. They told me you went all out, didn't you? I'm very envious. Smiling to herself, her tears began to fall. I must provide for my uncle. It's completely different from you, with how you, you let your parents do everything. Satoko. I'm so glad you enjoy yourself at the festival. I'm so glad you had enough fun for me too. I mean, I wanted to participate in a club too. Making such a racket with everyone is so much fun. But right now, I can't. I can't. Unable to withstand such violent emotion, a few teardrops slid down her cheek. But even though she was having such a terrible time, not once did she ever say that it was hard for her. It was sad. Obstinate m bravery. But the days when Satoko had to feel like that were over, Satoko don't, didn't need to endure it, to bear it anymore. She could forget all about it now and smile. I was so frustrated not being able to tell her that directly. Instead, I said something that I'm not sure I should have said before, before I thought twice about it. He didn't come home, did he? The words were deeply meaningful to me, but I didn't know if Satoko understood them. Didn't come home? Who? He didn't come home last night, did he? Your uncle? What are you talking about, Keiji-san? Satoko shouted with all her might. When was... When has he not been here? When? When? C calm down. I mean, he didn't come home yesterday, did he? I don't understand what you're trying to say, Keiji-san! Satoko, what are you talking about? I mean, that man, I... I killed him. Killed him yesterday. Killed him for sure. And I buried him. Buried him whole. He could have never returned to his house. 
even yesterday, he was torturing me so much. He yelled at me. He shouted at me. He found every he found fault with everything I did. He threw the dinner I made at it. I made him on the floor. He dumped his bowl of miso soup on me too. It was hot. It was messy, and I could. And I cleaned it all of it up. I cleaned all of it. <laughs> What? Our stories were matching up. He... That... Night? And this morning when we... And this morning when he woke up to make him breakfast, he got so mad at me. He would have gotten mad at me whether I'd gotten up or not. <laughs> Satoko? Rika-chan went over to Satoko and said a few words of consolation, but Satoko angrily refused those words and thrust Rika-chan away. Heini! Heini! Come back! Come back! <laughs> Crying, Satoko slowly walked out into the hallway. After a moment, Rika-chan went after her. I couldn't stop thinking about the words Satoko had spoken while crying. I buried her face uncle last night, but she said this morning that was impossible. I buried him last night, so she couldn't even have seen her uncle this morning. What was, what was Satoko? At that point, I heard Mion's cold voice. Hey, Kei-chan, what did you mean about Satoko's uncle? Hello? I said too much. I let my emotions get the better of me. Ren, I heard it too. You said Satoko's chan. You said Satoko chan's uncle didn't come home. Why? Why didn't he come home? That's strange. Satoko chan's uncle was right here this morning, wasn't he? So, why would you say he didn't come back? Come back? Hey, chan you've been saying weird things for a while. Suddenly, Mion and Rena started to speak in strange and creepy voices. What were they doing? What were they saying? Hey, chan isn't it somehow inconvenient for you for Satoko's uncle to be around? You know, what are you talking about? Of course, it would have been better if Satoko's uncle wasn't here. I knew it! <laughs> yep, that's true, of course. Oh, even that he did that! No! Hang on, Jojo! Yep, that's true. Of course, he were if only he weren't here, right? <laughs> something, something wasn't right. The next thing I knew, Mion and Rena were smiling thinly, and their eyes were dark and muddy in a way I've never seen before. And as our eyes met, that mud even seemed to fill the air. Satoko's uncle is an awful person, no doubt. I think we'd be all be better off without him. Gone just as much as you do. But he's here. There's nothing we can do, right? Nothing we can do? Something's wrong. Something's clearly wrong here. What was happening? After a moment, a chilly liquid like feeling as though my blood had been mixed with sherbet. Wow, <laughs> Diddy Kong Racing came to mind when I read sherbet. Crawled up my spine. No choice, I mean, of course there was... There isn't, but... Then Satoko would never... If there's no choice, what would you do? Er, Reno was trying to prompt me to say more, 
there, there really was no choice, so I killed him. I killed him to protect Satoko. That's... <clears throat> Leave him alone. I think things will resolve themselves soon enough. Satoko-chan said her uncle was here, so he's here. He was here yesterday, and he's here today. She said so, so it's fine, right? Right? Miona and Rena were speaking unbelievably dismissively. How could they be talking like that? Miona and Rena, they were my friends and were seriously worried about Satoko's abuse, weren't they? They would never blurt out something like this. And I definitely killed Satoko's uncle. No matter what Satoko or, or anyone else says, I wouldn't acknowledge it because him being alive was impossible. There's no way he was alive. It was impossible. And thanks for the pizza slice, by the way. And can you hear me, by the way, Etla? And yet, since Satoko herself said he was here, then he was alive. Oh, okay, cool. I didn't know why or how, but suddenly Mion and Rena were at my side, standing there silently. Let's go home, Kei-chan. After we leave, Rena wants to go treasure hunting for the first time in a while. Mi-chan is coming too. Kei-chan. Oh, Kei-chan, you should come along. Of course, you're not allowed to refuse. If w words could freeze blood, then there is no doubt that they frozen me solid. I could hear it, a layer of thin ice, the sound of all my muscles tensing. And with them closely at my side, we left the school, as if they were police officers taking me away. They talked about silly things the, the entire way home, like they always did, but they always stood at my side, as to prevent me from escaping. This was strange. Everything about this day was strange. Actually, it had been strange ever since the previous night. Yes, thinking back, it had been strange ever since killing Satoko's uncle. That creepy meeting with Takano-san was only the beginning. That insane night was still continuing. Yes, it still hadn't ended. What? What's wrong, k -chan? Why do you suddenly stop? Ah, uh, sorry. It's nothing. When I stopped, it was distant, but I definitely heard them. An extra set of footsteps. That was proof. Jeez, I wonder who could those footsteps be? Is it how- Ah, uh, never mind. Proof that insane night hadn't ended. Mion left where she usually did, and we finally came to my house. Ah, uh, it's alright. Have fun with Minecraft, though, Yuya. Okay, Keiji-kun. Wait here for me. Rena will come to pick you up soon. What was it? She was inviting me along of the oversized garbage treasure hunts at the dam site, right? But why now? Mion coming along was strange, too. Mion said may have accepted Rena's little hobby, but... She hated fishing through garbage, so she'd never come with her before. And the location specifically being the dam site was a little creepy. The dam construction site was completely outside the flow of everyday life. It was so remote that no one ever went there unless they thought to, they thought to in particular. And thanks for the burger hype. Or the sandwich hype. Yeah, there's no, like, burger meat there. Nobody lived there, and there were no lights. So at night, it got dark quickly. I was for being forcibly invited here. There was no reason I had to fear Rena and Mion. Besides, wouldn't the trouble I'd make by refusing them be a pain to deal with? In the way, it didn't seem like going treasure hunting with them was a bad idea. But... That insane night was c continuing, having the sirens of instinct been wailing in my mind for a while now.
warning me that Rena and Mion were strange, that I needed to be cautious. The warning si sirens were so loud, it felt like my head would split into two. Ah, uh, Rena, I, I actually have something to do. Something to do? Like what? Like what? It's just I have something to do, okay? If you have something to do, why didn't you say it when Michan? While Michan was here, I already told you to meet us at the dam site before we split up. Rena was smiling, but her words made her discomfort clear. S sorry, I just kind of missed the opportunity to say so. Really? You're lying, aren't you? You just made that up now, you li You liar. That's what Rena's eye said to me. Um, I... My er, head hurts. I, might, I may have a cold, so I want to get checked out and get some medicine. Really? That r wasn't really a lie. My head did hurt a little, so I wasn't lying. Rena's... She couldn't figure out if my head hurt or not just by looking at it. Then... I guess that's that. After staring at me in the eyes for a few moments, she fired a sharp needle-like stare at me. Oh no! Oh wait. I don't even know why I keep using all these jo Jojo clips. Oh. Hang on. This is what I think. The tensions in my body loosen, and I felt like my knees might buckle. If you're going to the clinic, then you should go soon. Sometimes they close up early. Thanks. I'll do that. Make sure you go, okay? To the hospital. I... I will. Go for real. I will. It seemed like Rena had realized I was going to refuse her invitation for a while now. How serious she looks. She might actually call the clinic later to make sure I win. I couldn't say anything careless. Lying about getting checked out was just an excuse to decline her request in the first place. It didn't matter matter whether I actually went. Yeah, I'll go. If you want, I could bring you the bill tomorrow. Oh, that would be good. Be sure to bring it, okay? Rena, Rena will look at it then. Another tingle started crawling up my back. There was no ignoring it. Rena and Mion must have been monitoring, monitoring my movements. That wasn't normal. Far from it. All of it was insane. I did what I did, did but I wanted my peaceful like back. But... What? What on earth was all this? It was far from peaceful. Something had gone mad, leaving the world out of order. With the other KG Maibara, with those creepy footsteps I've been hearing. With Rena and Mion acting so curious, and above all, with him being alive, where was I? Hinamizawa Village, Shishibone. I knew that much. Was it. Was this really the Hinamizawa I knew? And thanks for the pe pirate paper! <laughs> Hey, Keiji Maibara, where is this? I asked, whipping out before the front door to face the one who was who has been following in my wake all day. Nobody would have been there, of course. And hi, Odin, how are you doing tonight? Keiji Maibara, huh? That's what I just called him. Called the one who had been trailing behind me th th this whole time. That shadowy presence, cle always clinging to me, like it was constantly watching for the opportunity to change places. Footsteps always following me was another impossibility. It couldn't have been a ghost, so it was just impossible. So the strangeness must have been my ears, my head, or Hinamizawa. Everything I, would, I could see was the exact same exact Hinamizawa I knew so well. and gave me the creeps. Oh, I see. Eventually, I decided to go to the clinic. I really didn't want to go outside, but a stronger feeling than desire was the fear Rena 
might actually be keeping an eye to see if I went to the hospital. At least I didn't see those creepy eyes in that one, because I did in the anime. But before I went to the clinic, there was something I wanted to make sure of. It was at school. I pretend I'd forgotten something. I was going back to the classroom to pick it up, and thanks for the taco, by the way. Oh. <laughs> the apple cider, I guess? And was going back to the classroom to pick it up. And the pumpkins. As soon as the thought crossed my mind, I was overwhelmed by paranoia. Yeah, like what, in the first one? <laughs> oh, that was a horrible joke. Uh, I was just going to the classroom, but I hated it so much having to be careful to fake it. After carefully verifying once more that nobody was watching, I went over to the locker. Yes, Satoshi's locker. I committed a crime with a bat I found in this locker, Satoshi's bat, and thanks to the taco. And then I'd thrown the bat into the swamp. Which meant the bat shouldn't have been inside, but... But... What if... The bat was still in here? It was a very dreadful, incomprehensible idea. But if it were true, it would explain a lot. If the bat was in here, then yesterday's events would have all been a delusion. No, an illusion. I hadn't killed everyone, anyone. I had gone to the ve festival. I had a great time rampaging about with everyone. It would prove that Keiji Maibara was really me. Prove that I was on only under some strange assumption that I had killed Satsuko Sonko. Prove that it had all been a wild fantasy. Yeah, <laughs> thanks by the way. That would explain everything. Nothing happened yesterday. I'd just gone mad, unable to separate my shocking, uncle-killing dream from reality. That would explain everything. If the bat were, was here, would I be able to accept that reality? If it was here, nothing would have changed. If it was here, then it would just mean I'd gone crazy. Preparing myself for the worst, I opened the locker door. I was actually scared of opening it slowly, so I threw it open with a bang. And just like the first time, the choking set of smell, smell and sweat, like a stale towel, came flowing out. There was a baseball uniform and some miscellaneous other things, like notebooks. There was also a shoe pouch. And as for the bat, it wasn't here. It was how I left it when I took the bat out. There was no doubt yesterday really happened. Now that I knew I wasn't a lunatic, I felt relieved. But at the same time, if I wasn't the crazy one, then Hinami Zawa was. And that was an evidence of a reality I was... I found it just so difficult to accept. You have it set to audio only, right, Odin? There was a noise somehow, creeping into everything I saw. And the world was losing a tiny bit of color. So, what did I know about last night? Now that I made sure the bat wasn't here, and I didn't need to be here anymore. Shall I go? For real to the hospital? It was my first time going to the hospital, but from what I heard, it wasn't far from school. My mom had told me where it was, a big, easy to use, see road went straight there. I went past the shopping street, made a turn. It wasn't overly hard to stop the sign with Ire Clinic written on it. There wasn't one other person, an older man, there in the air-conditioned waiting room. I went up to the counter and told them it was my first time here. The man behind the counter glanced at the clock and said there was a, there'd be a short wait. Um, I, I said, it, do you have it set to uh, audio only? Yeah, low latency is actually on. It was almost five. Clinic hours should be at ending, would be ending soon. As I sat in the unfamiliar waiting room, isolated from everyone, and let myself feel the cool air, I actually felt relieved. 
What should I tell the doctor when he comes? I could tell him I had a cold, but I was but I was very the very pi picture of health. Actually, I wanted to, him to check my head. I wanted someone to confirm for me whether I was really sane or not. Oh. KG Maibara-san, please come into the examination room. Huh? The voice from the other side of the examination curtain I thought I heard somewhere before. Hello, this is the first time we've seen each other here. Coach? Coach, you are a doctor? Now that you mention it, he did seem to know this way around when he was looking at my shoulder in the nurse's office. It would make sense if he was actually a doctor. Come to think of it, our teacher called him Ire Sensei, didn't you? Well, yes, I'm more or less a doctor here. Doctors have it really good, you know. You get to see and touch all... That's what I think. Touch all the young, silky, smooth skin. I could inject them with a weird chemical that make them... Help me! Oh my god! <laughs> that make them my slaves and have them be my personal maids. Thank you very much. Just seeing that made my cold go away. I'll be leaving now. Polite bow. Whoa, wait, wait! Maibara-san! A joke! It was a joke! Come, come, sit down. Let me take a look at you. <laughs> I'll need to use my stethoscope. So... Show me your... <laughs> Silky smooth chest, Maibara-san. For some reason, I felt really relieved. After that insane night, as much as I thought everything had gone crazy, Coach was here doing the same thing he always did. I was very happy for that. Hmm, you don't seem to have a cold. Actually, those scrapes and cuts all over you seem to be the painful thing. <laughs> don't tell me you were playing in the bushes with shorts and s sleeves and shorts. I mean, I can't say for sure. You haven't been infected with... Tinnitus? As I was chasing that man last night, I kept being scraped by bits of trees. I didn't realize I had so many cuts. <laughs> you went a little too crazy at the festival yesterday. Enjoy that while you're young. And once again, I apparently went to the festival. Coach, did you go too? To the festival? Yeah, of course I did. I may be a doctor, but I'm also on the Watanagashi Executive Committee. Did you see me there? The cold chat was the same coach that I always known. And I felt like I could trust him more than my weird friend, so I asked. Well, actually, I was drinking in the main tent with the chairman and the others the whole time. I didn't go out to the, see the festival at all. I don't think I saw you. Oh, that was a strange question. Did you have too much to drink and forget about what happened last night and under age two? You bad child. Coach let out and laughed. He didn't laugh in an unnatural way like Mion and Rena did. Coach was okay. He was the coach from the world I knew. He wasn't someone from this abnormal world. Well, this all might seem a little weird to you, but I want you to hear me out without laughing. Yes, go ahead. I 
I greatly welcome any shy, bashful war. Okay, I think that's enough Joseph Joestar for now. Anyway, <laughs> welcome. Any shy bashful worries you, you might have as you come into your secondary sex <laughs> Oh god, stop. <laughs> Could it be possible that I have an identical twin? Coach hadn't expected that question at all and couldn't say anything for a moment. But then, he smiled calmly and quietly answered. This is just a superstitions, but I've heard before that everyone has two other people in the world who just who look just like them. If there was, I'd certainly like to meet him though. Yeah. Also, there are plenty of fairy tales where a person's double appears. The German ones about doppelgangers are probably the most famous. Doppelgangers? <laughs> yes, they look exactly like the other person. Apparently, they herald misfortune. And if you meet one, you're sure to die soon. And I think that's how it went when you meet them. You're sure to die soon. The story ended directly in death, plain and simple, and it made my spine tingle. Coach wasn't saying it to scare me though, he was just offering a casual an antidote. But that made it all feel the more real. Dude, so uncool. Yeah, that's what I think about every time I hear that sound. Have you ever heard of one of those things showing up in Hinamizawa? What? <laughs> well, I can't say that I have. <laughs> uh, Coach must have thought he was being teased, so he laughed in an exaggerated way. But when I didn't smile with him, his laughter steadily grew fainter. I'm sorry, well, I was being so, sort of being serious. No, I apologize for laughing. Was there something you were worried about? I wonder if I should tell him. Then after resolving myself one final time, I slowly spoke. I... I didn't go to the festival yesterday. Is that right? Well, there will be one n next year. Then you can. That's not what I meant. I didn't go to the festival, but according to everyone else, I was there. Could that even be possible? After blinking his eyes in amazement, Coach thought seriously about what I was trying to say. And he answered, choosing his words carefully. Let me make sure I have this straight. My Vodakun? You went to the Watanagashi festival, but don't remember it, am I right? I was trying to say something completely different, but I suppose any sane person would come to that conclusion. That night, Keiji Maibara was actually at, at the festival, but I was saying I didn't go. That was obvious. That obviously meant my memories of going there had failed me. But. That was absolutely impossible. That vivid act I had committed during the downpour couldn't have possibly been an illusion. All these scrapes on my body proved it, as does the fact the bath was in the locker. No, that's not it, coach. I really didn't go to the festival. Please don't take offense, my Barasan. Have you ever had an experience where you were suddenly somewhere unfamiliar and you couldn't remember why? No, and I didn't lose any memories or anything. Because while the festival was going on, I was definitely doing something else. It wasn't like I was asleep or unconscious or anything. You're certain you were doing something else? 
No, I know I'm being awfully rude, but are you sure you're not mistaken? I know I'm not. My memories are clear as day, and they were real. And during the festival, you weren't at the shrine, and you were doing something somewhere else? Can you definitely prove that? Um, that's right. Thinking it through brought me to this. There wasn't... There was only one way to prove what I was... That I really wasn't at the festival yesterday. And that was to show there was no doubt I killed her uncle. Coach saw me struggling to answer and his eyes looked a little cold. I guess uh, they would. After all, from Coach's perspective, I was just a weirdo sputtering nonsense. Would you like to lay down? Maybe you should relax and take it easy for a bit. Sorry, I didn't really come here to li li lay down. You seem a little worked up. Why don't I give you a sedative that I'll let you sleep at for a bit? That way, I'm not being strange! Cold seemed to realize he was treating me like a deviant, and he raised his voice. I apologize if I've offended you, so please, calm down. I definitely didn't go to the festival, that's the truth. I understand. I understand, so please calm down. Take a bre deep breath. No, you don't understand at all! Coach was stunned and stared in stupid stupefaction. I do understand, my son. You didn't go to the festival yesterday, is that right? I believe you. I believe you. Coach jotted down a brief note in his records. He was writing it in German, so that his patient wouldn't know what it said. But I could make a good guess as to what he wrote. You won't believe me until I told you everything. I was doing at the time, will you? No, I believe you. Please, sit down. Before I sat, I tilt my head back a little, the blood in my face all drained out, and I was quieted down. After taking a deep breath, I made sure that I was calm now. It would have been impossible for me to be at the festival because at the time I was... Did I tell him or not? Well, just do it already! Didn't want to go on living like this, feeling this horrible, and I said them the final fatal words. Because I was killing Satoko's uncle at the time. I could smell the concrete in the room, and I could feel the air around us sharpen. Nobody moved. Only the sound of the clock ticking told us time hadn't stopped. With his mouth wide open, Coach even forgot to blink for a little while. You killed Satoko Chan's uncle? Yeah. It went fine. Na it's fine now, KG Mai, but uh, don't hesitate. Admit it with all your strength. Yes. Last night I did it. I killed him. Ugh. I spoke clearly and fluently. I could easily tell that Coach's mind had gone completely blank. Why would you. No. That was a foolish question. I believe this is the most direct method of saving Satoko, so I carried it out. I don't have any regrets. I... I see. <laughs> Coach smiled thinly and, thinly and nodded a bit. So, I couldn't have been at the festival. I love the brightness of my house for the darkness of the outside. After that, I dug holes, I made phone calls, I had my hands full, and then I attacked them killed him and buried him it was pouring hard at the time the festival started that evening but was suspended due to the rain and there were no gaps in my memories from the late afternoon until it started to rain there was no time for me to have possibly gone to the festival and those wounds are they from that yes there's a road through the forest near satiko's house I attacked them there, he ran, I chased him, and finally killed him near the road that leads to town. Is that... true? Killing her uncle, it didn't seem like some... it wasn't some wild fantasy. And I could tell that coach didn't believe me, so I spoke slowly, not letting myself grow excited. It's true. I killed him with Satoshi's bat, I threw it and the uncle's mortar bike into the swamp, but did you really have to be that specific? I dug a hole, killed him, and buried him.
I did it all by myself. Satoko-chan's uncle drove past you on a motorbike, did he? Then you predicted he'd do that and just waited? I assume he wouldn't be leaving his house that day, so I lied to him over the phone to get him out. You called him, but your phone is so- your house is so far away from Satoko-chan's, I wouldn't think you'd be able to make it there soon as- so soon after calling him. I used the phone closer to where I was going to attack him, the one at the- at school. But my Barasan, it was Sunday, wouldn't the school have been locked up? A forest ranger happened to go inside for a bit. I slipped in when I had the chance. After ch that, coach grilled me on a um, few different things regarding the incident. He made sure to question me carefully, looking... Grilled me on a few different things regarding the incident. He made sure to question me carefully, looking for any contradictions in my account. I don't believe you. What did you... What you did yesterday doesn't seem like a dream. I explained everything, including minor details, that only someone who actually committed the act could explain. I could, of course. It was only yesterday. Coach realized that my story had no expended coincidences or too convenient details that would exist in a daydream or de delusion, and finally he seemed to want to believe me. So, do you still think I went to the festival and lost my memory? Coach slowly shook his head. But everyone in class, they said I was at the festival Yesterday, is that even possible? No, it's not. Your classmates probably mistook you for someone who looked very similar. Then, given how group psychology works, everyone just assumed you had been at the festival. They couldn't have mistaken me. Mion and all the rest said they were spending time with Keiji Maibara. It was much more than just having mistaken someone else for me. But saying that out loud would just confuse Coach. He spoke to me in whispered tones. Do you feel, feel guilty at all? It didn't sound like he was criticizing me. And even if he had, I would have flatly said the same thing. I don't. I did it so I could return the peaceful days he'd stolen from us, so I planned to forget all about having killed him and live my life as usual. Once Satoko's regular smile returns, the one from before he showed up, everything will finally be over. Any chance that someone witnessed the crime? I don't think so. If someone had seen me, I would have been arrested already. I am a doctor, my j job is to save lives. So I cannot make any statements to the effect of condoning the taking of another's life. So instead, I will say this. Coach slowly rose and placed my hand on my shoulder. For saving Satoko-chan, I thank you. Coach's eyes started shedding warm tears. When I looked at him, I started to feel some tears of my own. <laughs> I didn't know what I was crying for. Even so, for a little while, the two men in the room fought back their tears. But it's strange, what is? I'm sure I killed him, yet he seems to have returned home alive. Coach's expression immediately sharpened. Depending on the situation, there are many ways that mere inconspicuous can look like real death to a lay person. Do you think it's possible he was just knocked out? I hadn't checked for I didn't check for a pulse, but I'm pretty sure I did did him in. Can I ask you to reproduce the situation in which you attacked him, Maibara-san? Coach rolled up the health and fitness week poster nearby and offered it to me to represent the bat. Though I may have been lost to the emotions of a beast that night. 
I remember in detail the number of times I swung the bat, the angles I had swung from, and the force I applied. Using Coach as a stand-in for the uncle, I reproduced them over, one by one. And when he tripped and fell, I bashed him in the top of the head like this. When I did, it felt different from the other strikes. And I thought I cracked his skull. Coach was calmly analyzing this information, using the other places that I struck and the situation at hand to find out what state the uncle's body had been in. I totally wasn't sure he was dead, so I hit him a few times after he fell. Did he react at all? At first, I sort of felt his body jolting with every hit, but eventually that stopped too, and he didn't react at all. Hmm. Coach folded his arms and said, hmm, a few times. And then he spoke. He's dead. There's not much doubt about it. He just didn't look like he was. I can't say very much from your, just from your story, Maya Barasan, but I think it's almost certain. Besides, you buried the corpse in the mud, and that took you quite a bit of time, right? Let's say it took you 30 minutes, and that would mean... He was buried under the muddy water for those 30 minutes. If you don't breathe for that long, your brain will die no matter what. You mean, even ignoring how hard I hit him, he'd definitely have died while I was burying him. That's right. It's impossible to stay alive buried underground for 30 min minutes. Impossible, you're right, but... Satoko, she said he's alive. Coach, a doctor. Just gave his stamp of approval that he was dead for sure. That made it seem the more unfair that he could still be among the living. My Barasan? This is a really horrible idea, but is it possible that the person you killed wasn't actually your uncle? Huh? He's right. That could be why it's cleared up by the inconsistent inconsistency of my definitely having killed someone, him still being alive. There's no way. I mean, we're both at Satoko. We were both at Satoko's house when we were bringing his alcohol. When she was bringing his alcohol inside, and there was a man who struck his face out the door window to look. It was him, right? That was the Satoko's uncle, right? Yes, you're not wrong. It was that man. Could he have been more than one uncle or something? Not one that I ever heard of. It's just him. Could you tell me what he looked like? Well, his height first. He was about 175 centimeters, maybe a bit taller. In order to eliminate the worst possibility that I killed someone else, Coach began to thoroughly compare what the man and his mind looked like with what I told him the person I killed looked like. But no matter how in-depth in depth my description went, none of the characteristics deferred. The uncle's traits, according to Coach, were all exactly the same person... were all exactly the same as the person I killed. But those traits were all extremely vague, and they weren't particu particularly distinct at a glance. Could you, well, is there anything else about him that would let us identify him for sure? Yeah, I wanted to see how he looked in the updated version. Now that you mention it, I've never seen it, but I believe Satoko-chan once said a long time ago that he had a, a tattoo of a tiger or something on his back. A tattoo? That was really important. Not everyone had a tattoo. If I found the tiger on the back of the man's corpse, it would be proof I killed the right one. At the moment, though, there was one other thing that would verify this. 
to go to Satoko's house and see myself the uncle that, uh, that had returned home despite having died. But that was a far more terrifying. That was far more terrifying than digging up the body and looking at its back. Without even looking at the tattoo, I knew for sure the one I killed had been Satoko's uncle. I cracked up his head, opened and killed him. And yet he'd gone back home. There wasn't any misunderstanding or even the shadow of a doubt in my mind about having killed him. There wasn't any misunderstanding or even the shadow of, of a doubt in my mind about having killed him and yet... It was impossible for him to exist, kind of like how Keiji and Maibara had been at the festival, despite being despite it being impossible. That small commonality made me feel as though a faint but bizarre force was permeating this insane Hinamizawa. I wonder what on earth could have happened, despite you not going to the festival and killing Satoko Chan's uncle. You were at the festival, and, and the uncle you killed is alive. None of this makes any sense. When I looked at everything that way, it's almost like I'm just having a nightmare and there's no killer at all. But it's the truth. The sensation as I use my own hands and that bat to bash him again and again, it was, a, it was no illusion or dream. Coach let out a slow sigh. And after looking at the clock got up, let's go over this all a little more seriously. You'll excuse me, I'll go put on some tea. Clinic's about to close after all. I need to let the other's employees leave. Coach stood up and went out into the hallway, leaving me alone. The clock was about to strike six. I was at the festival and the uncle I killed was alive. Had I really committed murder yesterday? The only whispers of a fact that pr proved it was the absence of that bat from Satoshi's locker. In any case, I was glad that Coach had taken my nonsense seriously. I just confessed to murder. Normal normally that would frighten a person away. But Coach didn't run. He cried with me. I'm, I was glad he did. Like so, my tension smoothly melted away, and I suddenly realized I really had to pee. I thought to use the restroom while Coach had stepped out. There was one across the waiting room. As soon as I left the room, I saw a Coach and two other and two male doctors wearing white clothing standing in the shadows of the hallway nearby. I didn't particularly intend to eavesdrop or anything, but I was quite surprised upon noti noticing how un uneasy they seemed. I hid behind the wall and quietly listened in. Poach was giving directions to the two doctors. Black tea? I'll make some. Mix in amabartabol and raveno. Cover the taste with milk and sugar. He may grow suspicious at the sudden onset of drowsiness. And it's possible he may get agitated and become violent. We will handle that. How many male, sta male staffs are still here? One mountain dog, including us, three. What? What was all this? I think I was already agitated despite Coach. what Coach said. Was that it? Was it just a casual conversation? And it's... It was sounding... Only sounding unbelievable to me. Coach said he would bring me some black tea and left the room. And then in the shadows, he was telling his subordinates to put some kind of sleeping powder in the tea. Plus, they were getting extra help, 
In case I thought the sudden sleepiness was suspicious and started getting violent. Hey, wait, Keiji Maibara. Calm down, calm down. There's no way something this stupid could be happening. I thought he was genuinely listening to my story and even cried with me. I thought, I thought he was the one person in Hinamizawa who would understand. This was... This was... No, this was... There are signs of fabrication or falsehood, and his memories of yesterday in particular, particular are completely confused. He can no longer tell truth from falsehood. It's quite similar to multiple personality disorder. But as for how quickly this mental disorder emerged, it's just not normal. Maybe it's inborn, or perhaps there were signs of it before he moved here. I'd like to take a look at any records of him staying at a mental hospital before he moved here. In any case, I want him to take a quiet nap. The two doctors nodded deeply. I should possibly contact my Kun's parents too, though I can't think of what to tell them. Please find his home phone number for me. My eyes still moist began to shed tears once more. This was too cruel. I really thought he had actually understood, and I had to bl and I believed what I told him. But now from the other side of the wall, he bluntly treating he was bluntly treating me like a crazy person. I believed you. I believed you. I had let down my guard because I thought you were the only hell I had left after this insane that insane night. Was that a lie? All that about thinking on Satoko's behalf? Were you just pretending in order to keep me placated? Urgh! My tears fell to the floor in frustration. I was an idiot. I was an idiot. I was such an idiot for believing him. I heard footsteps approaching the doctors. A man in a dress shirt with no tie came running up. Dr. Ide, it's terrible. They they found Takano-san. Takano-san? Wait, here? Well, apparently they discovered her burned corpse in the mountains of Gifu. She's dead? Takano-san? The men, all surprised, exchanged glances. Dead? Takano-san? Hey, wait, so does that mean when I cursed her, wishing her for a death, that wish was granted? What do you mean, Burns corpse? Was it an accident? According to the Gifu police statement, the possibility is extremely high that she was murdered. <laughs> As I cried, I laughed quietly. Serves you right. Serves you right. If I hadn't run into that woman, my murder would have been perfect. <coughs> but she had just come driving up to me and tried to coerce me like that. I regretted not having her killed on the spot, N but now she was dead anyway. My curse, my wish for her demise, it was fulfilled. Serves you right. Serves you right. Risa-san died and Takano-san died? What on earth could be happening in Hiramizawa? Don't tell me that this was all Oyashiro Sama's curse for this year. Like, I'll let the curse be real, Coach said. Everyone present just nodded as, Co as Coach cursed at no one in particular. C -c 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 yes, maybe it wasn't Oyashiro Sama. This was definitely a spell, a curse. I wished for her to die, so she did. If it wasn't just a coincidence, she died because I wished for it. Then you'll die next, coach. You betrayed me. <coughs> oh, sorry. You pretended to believe me, but deep down, you thought I was a madman. You look down on me with all that pity in your eyes. For now, get the black tea ready. And I'll bring it inside. I don't think he'd let anyone besides me be alone with him. What do I do? What do I do, Keiji Maibara? 
This is the time I heard the voice of a nurse. Dr. Ire? Oh, there you are. You have a phone call. I'm a little busy at the moment, so please hold them. I'll call back. Who is it from? A Mr. Oishi from the Okinomiya Police Department. Ah, sheesh. What a bad timing. Alright, I'll answer it. Coach left to answer the phone. The other men headed down, headed towards the room with the teapot to make the black tea. Like Coach had ordered them to. Fortunately, Coach having to take that phone call meant there would be extra time for me to act. I had decided to what to do now. Would I let him drink, make me drink the tea in the sedative infused tea? Or be held down and thrown into a mental hospital? No one would have come from starting a brawl here. They had no more people, they have more people in anyway, and they were all bigger than me. If I, if it came to a fight, that I didn't have a, I didn't have a chance. If I couldn't win against them, then there was only one thing left to do, run. Adrenaline suddenly rushed into my brain and my body and started to move with keen instinct like it had on that night. My surface temperatures quickly cooled and the transmission routes between my cells enlarged. Using 360 degree visual information, I'd search for an escape route. I would open the window behind me Outside the park, outside was a parking lot. There were no cars. A little beyond, there was a bicycle I had taken to get here. I determined that this would be the quickest method of escape. I approached the window swiftly, but with little sound to raise as little suspicion as I could. With the speed and silence of a shadow like I'd, I had on the night I chased her uncle, I unlocked the window and opened it up. A cool evening breeze wafted in. I stuck out my head and looked over at the parking lot again. Nobody in sight, no need to hesitate. I quietly crawled outside the closed window behind me. I held my breath and listened carefully. No one seemed to have realized I'd run. I looked around, and then I jumped into my bicycle and zoomed away. The pedals clattered under the force. Had my bike always creaked like this? Did the pedals always whine every time I pushed down on them? My bike wasn't the only one crying, though. My tears fell as the wind cut through them. They rolled the breeze and scattered behind me. Urgh. I hate this, I hate this. I'm not the crazy one, Hinamizawa is. How dare you treat me like a madman? Die! Die! Just die already! Good grief, I believed you, I believed you! <laughs> I'd gone to the hospital in order to escape Brenna and Mion's invitation, but the reality that was waiting for me had been too cruel. Who was insane? Me or Hinamizawa? Or was the answer something else? I started having trouble breathing. I didn't have any clue what was happening anymore. The loud chirps of the Higurashis were irritating me. Ah, were the were even the Hinamizawa Higurashis I knew so well calling into the wind? No, that wasn't quite it. They weren't calling me. They were crying, the pain wailing. Of those lost in some kind of rhythm in another world, no longer able to return in the, to their own sunlight, 
I didn't do all that to end up in a world like that. And actually, about this time, I might have been having fun with everyone else. Satoko would have gotten her smile back after realizing <clears throat> her uncle wouldn't ever come home. And she might have shown it to us at our first club meeting in a while. That was some, that was the kind of world I wished for. So what was this? Why did I end up in such a strange, ghastly world? Someone I killed was living like normal, and I had enjoyed myself at the festival despite not being there. I don't want it. I don't want this strange world. When did it start to go wrong? When? When? No matter how much I thought about it, I never misunderstood. I rolled swiftly and returned to my home. It had begun to rain during my journey back, and just like yesterday, I was now soaked. I didn't care about something so trivial right now. The pain I felt in my heart that coached the one person I trusted was acting so cruelly was far worse. Did I have no allies in Hinami Zao anymore? With the na naive thought that I at least wanted my parents to side with me, I stepped up to the front door. Wait, Keiji? It'll be dark soon. There's something you want to check, right? Yes, I wanted to dig up the man's corpse and get a look at his back. If there was a tiger tattoo there, I know beyond a doubt he was Satoko's uncle. That long night wouldn't end, I was certain. And if this insane world was all reparation, all divine punishment, then, then I needed to make certain whether I had been successful enough to even deserve to pay that price. I went to a, the storage room again and got the shovel. He had been w washed in the rain, but the paint was peeling, making it look unsightly. I never ever wanted to touch this thing again. The sensation of it in my hands were totally different from the night before. There was a ruthless coldness about it. Yeah, it would be dark soon so I'd need the lantern too. There would be a little bit of light from the street lights but it would get extremely dark. Uh, I thought I put the lantern here but I suddenly noticed it wasn't anywhere to be found. Then it hit me like a bolt of lightning. Of course, on that night, I hadn't brought the lantern back with me. I'd left it at the place so I buried the body. If I didn't go to get it soon, it would get very dark. Then, and then, not only would I be unable to find the spot, I buried the corpse, but I wouldn't be able to find the lantern itself. If that happened, it was all over. I need to hurry. In order to fit the shovel in the basket in front of the, my bike, I need to twist it and dis disassemble it. But it looked like there was dirt in the joint, and no matter how hard I pushed, it didn't want to come apart. After a strenuous effort, I realized I couldn't get it apart. So I decided to hold it in one hand and ride it, ride my bike with the other. With the downpour pour soaking me through, and the shovel in one hand, and riding one-handed, it was as if I'd returned to that night. No, return was the wrong word. It was more like that night had never ended. The pain of the raindrops striking me were no different from then. The thing that was different was Hinamizawa, the world and nothing else. The rain clouds were already making it dark, and now was about the time for the sun to set. I could tell it would rapid it would only get rapidly darker. 
the strange l road leading to town in the middle of it that should be where I buried it yes it was near the street light on that night too the water from the downpour was spl was splashing down from the street lights overhang like a waterfall the pouring ra rain was exactly the same as it had been that night and thus it brought my memories into focus i left the bike in the brush and you wait don't you mean bush and step into the wind the ground already soaked with mud Where had I buried him? Think. The darkness, the shadows, the water, the mud. Everything was the same. Think. And then I spotted the lantern by a fallen moss covered tree. That's alright, I left it right here. So I left the lantern he here then. I would have buried him over here. But the sensation of standing in the sludge, my feet remembered the spot better than my eyes did. I plunge into the my shovel into the ground. <clears throat> it's hard. It wasn't here. I just dug it up. So it should have been softer. I stick my shovel down in a few spots just to test what it what they feel like. One of them clearly felt deeper. I recall where the lantern was, whereas the tree and things in relation to each other, and knew that it had to be here. Under here slept that man's corpse. There would definitely be the tattoo of a tiger on his back, but if it wasn't there, then I had made a horrible mistake and killed someone completely unrelatable instead. I would be more dazed at the fact that Satoko's uncle wasn't dead. Then I would regret having gotten somewhere else mixed up in this. <laughs> this insane world was punishment for the sin of committing murder. Murder. I wouldn't be able to accept it until I'd killed Satoko's uncle for good. And then without any fear, I'd attack him again. And that time, I would kill him for sure. But what if the tattoo was here? That would mean I killed Satoko's uncle. But that would be terribly strange. I'd kill them for sure. Then who was the uncle at Satoko's house at this very moment? Impossible. I didn't even know anymore what I was using impossible to refer to. I'd use, I've used the word quite a few times today. If I had to make words impossible fit one thing, what would it be? That was much obvious to me. It would be impossible for this crazy world to be real. I shouted, then turned behind me. There was nobody there, of course. It hadn't been bothering me for a while, but those footsteps had allowed, followed me the entire day. Even just now, an extra set of footsteps splashed behind me. No one was actually there. No indications of anyone, even. But they were there. Who are you? You had been following me ever since I came to this world. That's right, thinking back, the first time I heard those footsteps was after Takano-san and I had parted. Those footsteps were my welcome into this strange inside-out world. No one could be there. I'd get no responses. Whoever it could be, they just kept staring at me. It wasn't om om ominous just unpleasant. After staring into empty space for a bit, as I bathed in the rain, my illogical anger slipped away, my tension loosened, and had a tired feeling reared in its head. I tasted this feeling, tasted this feeling that night too. 
The sudden exhaustion I felt as the tension in my brain loosened. My vision quickly narrowed. And I felt like everything around me had suddenly gotten darker. I couldn't give in to the sensation. I would... I would light what little explosives were left in my brain and force myself to keep going. I need to dig that man up before my stamina ran out. I needed to see the ta tattoo on his back. I caught my suddenly ragged breath and calmed down. And then I sucked the shovel into the soft, muddy ground again. It felt exactly the same as that night. The sense of digging a hole in the beach <laughs> with water coming into it with every wave. What? What day was today? Had I gone back into the night of the Watanagashi? Every strange thought that came to mind tormented me. Given my exhaustion, I didn't think I could manage to hold those thoughts back. Once the hole was deep, all illumination finally faded, blanketing my vision in jet black. It was probably the moment the sun had fully set too. That night, I had feared the worst and had gone without using much light. My senses were so strange that I could, e I could even see in that darkness. But now... I didn't have that kind of strength left. I had drained everything I had last night, and now the darkness would be lethal. I had decided to turn on the lantern. Putting it on the first setting would, would make it give it off a faint light. Even with how little there was, it was enough, and people wouldn't be able to see it in a, from far away in this rain. I grabbed the chilled lantern, turned the dial with a click, set it to the weakest light setting, and turned it on. An uncanny world of silhouettes appeared before me. A complex and sh strange shadowy world created by the intricate entanglement of trees and branches. I had only turned on the light, and it was like that was all it took to make the world into something else. I let out a quick tired breath and whip wiped the liquid, neither rain nor sweat from my brow, then raised the shovel into the air and slammed it into the mud. That moment, the silhouettes surrounding me ominously all moved at once. Uh, inside my head, something packed in there. And something coarse, but not hot or cold, was loudly rushing about. The silhouettes were all around me, looking down at me, and one of them, a silhouette bigger than the others, stepped forward. Oh, hey. I'll be right back real quick.
<laughs> Good evening. <laughs> the moon sure is beautiful tonight. The coarseness in my brain shot through the my whole spine and left me up my waist. The strength in my body all left me through my hips, and I crouched down with a splash into the sea of mud. I dug myself. Oh, Oishi? <laughs> Is that really how you address your elders? You'll have a rough time of it before you become... Once you become an adult. <laughs> It was only Oishi, but five or six of them in a row, men wearing raincoats. I had no inkling that this many people had gotten so close. It was like, once I turned on the lantern, they just appeared there, sliding out of the shadows. Please, don't mind us. Please, don't mind us. Just think of us as trees in the forest, perhaps. Don't mind them? Yes. Pay no attention to us. Please continue digging your hole. Uh... It's very late and raining very hard. And you're working pretty fervently. We don't- we won't get in your way. Please, dig to your heart's content. <laughs> no thank you, I said. When I tried to get up and turn around, two men blocked the route. And they stood on either side of me and lifted me up with amazing strength. Then threw me into the sea of mud. As I soaked in the mud bath, I dug for myself. I looked up at the silhouettes looking down at me. Oishi squatted and picked up the shovel and then threw it at my feet for me. It bounced loudly off the mud and hit me in the face. Come, please continue. Continue. I couldn't bear any oppressiveness of the silhouettes surrounding me and slowly I stuck my shovel into the mud again. I felt like I was digging my own grave. If I had kept digging, it wouldn't matter whether there was a tattoo or not, because the man's corpse would appear eventually. It was all over. Surrounded on all sides and nowhere to go. But I couldn't figure it out, no matter how much I thought about it. Why were they here? Was it Takano-san? There was only one person who could have made the connection between me and this place. I knew it! She deserved to die! Stopping so soon? Ugh! Bam! Oishi kicked me in the back, which took me by surprise, sending me flying into the mud. Hurry up and dig, please! You really should consider the fact that some of us are standing out here in the rain. If you don't like the rain, then just go home. Grah! Boy, she kicked some mud in my face. Work, please, instead of talking. Only people from the red light district do both at once. Isn't that right, boys? The men around them didn't react, not knowing Quite whether they should laugh, but when Oishi glared at them, they started mumbling now, paying nuck chuckles. Just who was this guy? 
I knew the world had changed after that night, but if I even went further back, didn't it start when this guy showed up? Then that was when our peaceful lot days had been taken back, taken from us. Ever since she, he showed up in, in Hinamizawa, things have been odd. Everyone stopped smiling and the world went crazy. <sighs> the ground under my feet gradually got harder and heavier. At this point, even I started to think something was odd. I hadn't buried him this deep on that night, had I? My exhaustion peaked, and I sat down on the spot. How long do you want me to dig? Kids these days have no stamina. Hey, you! At Oishi's gesture, the men all pulled out their own sinister-looking shovels. As I watched the days, one of them grabbed my collar and dragged me out of the hole and threw me to the ground. The rest of the men stepped into the hole I dug and started shoveling themselves. As I started stared at them dumbfounded, Oishi sauntered over and squatted down to look at me directly. Keiji Maibara-san, is this a hobby of yours? Yours digging holes on rainy nights? When I didn't respond, Oishi took one of the tin buckets they were using to bail out the muddy water, s scooped up some of it, and splashed the whole thing on my face. The rain's heavy today, too. No matter how wet I get, I don't understand the appeal. Oishi smiled to himself, and then sco scooped up another bucket full of muddy water. I'll ask you again. Is digging holes on rainy nights your hobby? Who would have a hobby like that? Splash, Oishi hit me with another bucket full of muddy water. The pebbles in it stung. Will there be something in that hole? I've always liked that story, you know, about the old man who could make plants bl bloom and the puppy digging it, digging in his yard for gold. As he spoke, he ran the bucket through the muddy water again to splash it in my face again. What kind of treasure is bearing down there, hmm? Can't you at least give me a hint? <laughs> If you want me to know, then dig on your own time. You pig. I wasn't saying that out loud, but Oishi mercilessly drenched me in muddy water again anyway. If only, if only you hadn't shown up, the world wouldn't have gone wrong. Ever since you showed up, things have been strange. Satoko got abused by her uncle, I went, I ended up killing him. And the world went crazy. He was how it all began because of this culprit. He splashed another bucket on <laughs> of mud in my face. My insides were seething with anger. Die! You! You die too! If I had some strange power to kill someone by cursing them, like with. If I had some strange power to kill someone by cursing them, like with Takano san, then you're dead. And it won't be Oyashiro Sama's curse. It'll be mine. I'll curse you and kill you. What a rebellious look you're wearing. Why don't we use this opportunity to teach you a thing or two in that regard? We really do live in a peace. We really do live in peace these days. When I was about your age, corporal punishment was a norm for everything. Oishi-san. Oishi-san. One of the digging man in raincoats wiped the sweat off and called Oishi over. Oishi tossed the bucket away and turned around with an evil grin on his face. Yes, what is it? Please, look at this. Acceptance or maybe resignation. I wanted to say to them, so you blockheads finally found it. Yeah, that's right. I'm the one who killed them. But you're the police, so it's up to your own job to figure out who he is, right? 
Come on, prove it to me that he's really Satoko's uncle. What on earth? We think it's an old drain pipe. It seems to be connected to the irrigation channel over there. Let's smash the thing. It's not being used, is it? The men all exchange glances at then hesitantly broached another topic. Oishi-san? The ground down here is pretty hard. I don't think anything could be deeper than this. Did we get the location wrong? No, at first it definitely felt like the place had been dug up before, but after digging so far, the ground suddenly hardened. We think we've gone down further than a hole that we originally dug. So, what does that mean? There was a hole here, and someone filled it back up? Is that what you're trying to tell me? What? What were they talking about? <laughs> well, I'm at a loss. Aren't you, my Brasan? Oishi grabbed my collar and dragged me to the huge hole they dug. The mud inside was like an ocean. I couldn't see any drain pipe down there. One of the men stirred it with a shovel, letting me hear the clang against something hard. There was no doubt I buried him right here, but I hadn't buried him this deep. I didn't dig deep enough to unearth an entire drain pipe, so then this man's corpse, where was it? Proof, proof that I had been successful on that night was gone, gone, gone. Then what, what on earth was I, was I actually crazy after all and just possessed by the delusion I, that I killed someone? That couldn't be. It was the unmistakable truth. It could have been a, a hallucination, but now the most important evidence that it hadn't been an illusion was gone. I killed him. I buried him. I had an absolute unwavering confidence in that fact. Then, did I fail to kill him? After I left here, had he started breathing again? Crawled out and gone back to Satoko's house? Was that it? I'd come here to see whether he had a tattoo or not, tattoo or not, and yet the truth I unearthed was far more than that. I yesterday, what was I? I killed him, I buried him. There was no doubt, but for some reason he lived and crawled back out. And that was impossible too. Ah, I'm so tired of hearing the word impossible over and over. I get it, I get it. Dead people don't like to play by the rules here in Hinamizawa. Then I, I'll kill you as many times as I need to. I'll keep killing you until you never show your face to Satoko again. Oishi and the other were muttering to each other. Eventually, their conversation ended and Oishi came towards me. What did he want to say? What did he want to do? I stiffened, tensing up, and then Oishi just ignore me like I wasn't there and passed right by me. The other men too, they ignored me and shuffled away. Eventually, there was no longer a sign that anyone was around. I returned to my quiet world of silhouette. 
The only one left there was me. Only the sound of pouring rain filled up the silence. Yeah, I just got another achievement. I'm just gonna read all the tips and call it a night. Okinomiya Police Station Command Center Transmission Recording June 20th, 8.08 p.m. This is the Okinomiya Police Station. We read you loud and clear. Hello, we'd like to look like to uh, we'd like you to look up a license plate for us. Alright. Please forget give us just a moment to look it up. Thank you. Number match. Owner. Address Inamizawa Village. Shishibone. Vehicle make and model. Theft reports none. Special mentions nothing on note. Okinomiya pol security police to Oishi. We found the license plate from earlier. Oishi, do you read? Oishi, please respond. Hmm? Am I getting a bad, si bad signal? Anyone in Oishi Oishi's car, please re Nothing, eh? Oishi sans. Oishi sans wanted a license plate check. Whose car was it? Someone from the village. A completely average car. Who was it? If Oishi san was asking, then it can't be anyone good, right? Special mentions column is completely blank. No indication it was it's related to the S yes group either. And no demerits on it. <laughs> Maybe it passed on him and he got mad. That guy isn't the type to forget a grudge. He said it smelled. He said the food smelled. He said it smelled because I smelled. He said I'd smell because I don't take baths. He said to take a bath three times a day because I was a smelly person. He said I had to stay in the bath for a long time every time. He must be possessed by something too. This is the same thing the man who died said. Why does it... he know that what the man said before? That much is obvious. The thing that possessed that man is now possessing him. Can a sudden earthquake make a big hole in front of the house? And if it did, he would definitely go and look into it. And then I have to push him in. I won't give in until I get that chance. I won't give in. I won't cry. I won't give in. I won't cry. Ah, someone is apologizing again. Apologizing again. Let me check something real quick. Yeah, let me restart the game. Oh, okay. <laughs> Let me load up the game just so I could give my closing statements. Otherwise, I'd probably think I'd just finish this tomorrow. And finish off him, or if I finish this early, I might go in that surprise I was talking about as well. So, otherwise, tomorrow I finish this and then. Probably just jump to Ima Subushi just so I could get that out of the way quick as possible before Halloween, before next month. 
And otherwise, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.